Hey, what's up, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick family? No, not, nothing strange happening over here on the TikTok and Instagram pregame show at all. We've been behaving ourselves. No freestyling, no smiling, no laughing, no fun. It's just been serious, very serious. As today's topic of conversation, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick family, how nice of you to join us. I apologize for not bringing you in earlier. Is going to perhaps be how to prepare for war. How to prepare for war. Um, I think this is important, just preparedness in general. Um, I've gotten a lot of emails. Hasn't everybody? Somebody shout amen. Somebody just type amen. I've gotten a lot of emails, and I know you have too, about like emergency preparedness. It's like a thing. And then like maybe your mom. I love my mom. My mom will literally text me and be like, Jeremy, it's raining outside. Drive safe. I love my mom. To which I respond. I respond in honor. I'm like, thanks, mom. Thanks, mommy, for letting me know that it's raining. I will. I will drive safe. Thank you for that word of wisdom, for that counsel. And I definitely receive all wisdom and counsel from mamas and papas. It would serve us well. Um, emergency preparedness. And so maybe you have things in your motor vehicle. I don't know, like a flare. I don't, pine, what, not pine cones. What are those emergency like side, like highway cones, like flashy. You got a visi, visi vest. Maybe at home you got like an emergency preparedness kit because like being prepared is actually super important in all of life. Um, maybe we'll take another example from all of life and it's, maybe you've heard this, Hey, I'm just preparing for a rainy day. Make sure you save money for a rainy day. Like whatever it is, right? Just being prepared, um, to help us all maybe understand the reasoning and the methodology behind today's proposed topic, which is how to prepare for war. Um, war can be intense, uh, but so can all of life. Um, even when bombs are not flying and people are not dying and missiles aren't being 5,000 missiles within a few hours on mainstream media, you know what I'm saying? Even when we are not aware of the constant war that takes place all across our world, just because it's not being broadcasted or talked about doesn't mean that bombs aren't flying and people aren't dying. Um... It would serve us well to be prepared so that we're not caught off guard when we are in an emergency situation. Okay, um, so you, you might not be privy, I don't know, to any, any, like, any wars in involving um, bombs flying and people dying. We're going to talk more about people dying. I mean, we talk about people dying every single live stream. And even as we mentioned that now, day 509, it's two years of live streaming, it still is kind of jarring language, to be honest, because it's like, dude, I don't even know you, babbling, bobbling Bible boy. Um, so why are you talking about me dying all of a sudden? Like, we just met, and the first topic of conversation is, brother... If you were to die tonight, where would you go? It's like, it's, I don't even know you. I just literally met you on the street. What do you mean where are you? Is this a threat? Like, what is this? Like, what is this? No, it's a gospel presentation. Oh, well, don't I feel comforted by your gospel presentation? Um, maybe you've experienced other war in your own household with your own family emotional war, mental war, in your own mind and in your own thought life. How to prepare for war. So if we're not prepared for anything, maybe it's war, maybe it's a rainy day, whatever, uh, any unfortunate circumstance, we can be caught off guard. And it also, um, if we're not prepared, it can actually... If we're not prepared, what we will do is actually react in fear and hysteria and high emotions. And we are actually in those moments unreasonable because we're ill-prepared and ill-equipped for tragic circumstance. 
However, there are people who are perhaps prepared because war is not new to them. And these are the people, because they live in war, and they always hear gunfire. Maybe you live in a certain neighborhood where gunfire and, and glass breaking and car alarms and sirens are just a part of your environment. And so it doesn't alarm you because you are in that environment every day and you're prepared. I was listening to somebody, um, if I named them, I think the majority of us would probably know who they are. Um, they're a minister of the gospel, highly respected, very good reputation. To tell you a little bit about this person, they will rescue infants from dumpsters. So in their part of the world, people throw away in the garbage human beings in their part of the world. Uh, and so what this person will do is go to dumpsters and rescue crying infant human beings, babies. And then she'll raise them up, she will raise them up as her own children and then graduate them from the university that she herself built through her ministry. Just to tell you a little bit about this person, she feeds through her ministry. She's kind of the head of the ministry uh, over 20,000 churches, I would say, and uh, they, they, they feed about 50,000 meals a day. 50,000 meals. And honestly, we think we're cute. We just did Thanksgiving dinner outreach, uh, like warm turkey meals to the streets. Maybe like 50? 5 zero? Uh, It was great. We prayed with some people, hugged with some people. What, like people came to church, people we met on the street, this was last week, handing out warm turkey meals uh, to like tent city and encampments, homeless people, hungry people, uh, came to church that following Sunday. It was just so, so cool. Um, this person that I'm talking about, uh, this specific minister of the gospel, will feed five 50,000 meals a day, and this is what they say, it's a drop in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket. It's not enough. We need more meals. And uh, they were speaking in Israel. As they, over, as they overlook Jerusalem, this is in the past couple days. I just watched it today. Um, and she's like, yeah, we're in Israel. Yeah, we're here. And, uh, oh yeah, they were like, when, <laughs> when 5,000 missiles started to fly within a couple hours, oh yeah, people were banging on our doors. They were like, you need to get to the bomb shelter and you need to go right now. You need to, you need to get right now. Um, and they continue to tell us that it was no surprise to them because they are constantly living in a state of war. And therefore, because they are prepared, having been in that environment for as long as they have, they are able to stay calm. And because they are able to stay calm, they can actually respond with logic and reason and wisdom and strategy and maturity and experience. With the alternative being not responding with leveled, controlled emotions, but reacting with elevated emotions similar correlating to fear, uncertainty, hysteria, doubt, and just panicking. I don't know if you've been in an emergency situation before, and I'll be the first to tell you I'm that guy who just panics. To which I would say to myself, Jeremy, hey, babbling, bobbling Bible boy, sit down. Bro, sit down. You're doing nobody any good right now. You can't even think clearly. We can't even talk to you because you are so fearful. And you are so full of fear and hysteria and you're so frantic. You just need, like, we can't even strategize with you. So you're actually doing everybody zero good right now. Please have a break. Please sit down and have a breath of fresh air. And then we'll have other people lead, okay? 
That's why it's important for us to be prepared for emergency scenarios and circumstances, whatever they might be in our life. Maybe it's war. Uh, maybe it's something physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, financially. <laughs> there's one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go there. Financially, uh, as well as spiritually. You know. Um, and I won't go there either. It's just, it's just, we're going to try and stay focused. In terms of being prepared for war, um, unfortunate circumstance, the tender realities that are very sobering in our human experience happen all the time. So... If for some reason we are not prepared for emergency response, if we are not prepared for, um, you know, maybe situations that are not necessarily favorable in your personal life. Again, it doesn't have to be war where bombs are flying and people are dying. It can simply mean may maybe you're having a quarter life crisis. And you're like, I can grow hair still. Let me just prove to the world that I can still grow hair because you're having a quarter life crisis. Um... Whatever it is, if we are ill-prepared for unfavorable circumstance, that could be a sign that we are out of touch with reality. Uh, or we're not having basically the mature conversations, as confrontational and as uncomfortable as they might be, that we need to have. So, as an example, we can prepare for war because we understand that war has been happening forever. And it's nothing new and that war will continue to happen. And so what we need to do is have a conversation, maybe with ourselves first and foremost, and understand through logic and reason that this stuff happens. This is reality. And we need to understand that so we can stay calm and logically strategize for the best steps forward. Because the other option is I am so in my own world, in my Western luxurious comforts, that the second war is broadcasted on mainstream media, all of a sudden I react with high levels of emotion, as opposed to responding with leveled emotions. Maturity, wisdom, and experience. And the second we start to see images that are honestly engineered, to create fear, uncertainty, doubt, and even enmity between each other. If we are not prepared because we are so in our own world, steeped in wes Western luxurious comforts, where our alcohol isn't alcohol enough, and my margarita isn't margarita enough, and my bellini isn't cold enough, and my hot tub isn't hot enough, it, it would make sense why somebody is ill-prepared for the tender circumstances that we all experience. So the goal is to some way, somehow, be prepared for anything and everything This is what the minister of the gospel said today. They, they were simply talking about, because they preach and teach a lot. One of the greatest fears for many of us, myself, I would, I would know, public speaking. Public speaking. And so, as a minister of the gospel, this same individual that, that I was speaking about, feeding 50,000 meals, rescuing crying infants from dumpsters, raising them up, 18, 19 years old now, as their own child and graduating them from the college university that they themselves built. Um, as a traveling itinerant minister of the gospel and a public speaker, this is what they say. They say, I never prepare. I never prepare for my talks, they say. Instead, they actually say, I prepare my life. That's what they said. They're like, I never prepare, 
And if you're familiar with public speaking or, or preaching and teaching or like sermons, whatever environment, it doesn't have to be the religious circles. It could be education. It could be arts and entertainment. It could be media. It could be politics and government. It could be business, corporation, entrepreneurial realms, family, whatever it is, right? Um, maybe you need notes. You've seen people with pro presenter. That's how they prepare. PowerPoint notes. This minister is like, yo, I, I never prepare. Instead, I prepare my life. They're like, yeah, I have points when I speak, but you're going to have to just catch it because it's just going to come out of me because I've prepared my life. I don't prepare for one moment. I prepare for every moment. Maybe that's the crux and the key and the core of today's topic. That's how you prepare for war. You don't prepare for a moment. You prepare for every moment. How? By building your life on solid rock that is unshakable so that when the winds and waves of humanity, of the human experience, the fragility of life comes hounding at your front door, you're already prepared. Whatever that might be. Bombs flying, people dying, your own personal circumstance. Maybe your latte isn't latte enough and now you're having an existential crisis and you think that you're being attacked, marginalized, you know, singled out because your hot tub isn't hot tub enough and your bellini isn't cold enough. We'll read some Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 says this. Preach the word of God, be prepared. Preach the word of God, be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. Be prepared. In and out of season are perhaps the words that we're more familiar with. Preach the word of God, preach the gospel in and out of season. Be prepared, even when the time is unfavorable. Whether the time is favorable or not, be prepared. That's the key. To not prepare yourself for one moment, but to prepare your life in a way that you are ready for every moment. How do I do that? Babbling, bobbling, Bible boy. So glad you asked. Jeremiah chapter 17 Let's go with verse 7 and 8. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Ooh, that'll preach. This stuff preaches itself, meaning the word of God. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. How can somebody possibly be confident in times of war? I don't I think we responded to that question a lot already. Today, how can somebody have hope when they are faced constantly with the fragility of the human experience, with grisly crimes that are actually so repulsive it would disgust us to our core if we were to mention them. Like, I'm not even going to go there. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees. Talking about people. Blessed are those, meaning people, who, meaning people, trust in the Lord, the God of the Bible. And have made the Lord their hope, meaning people's hope, and confidence. They are like people. People are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots. That's huge. Roots that reach deep into the water. I think it's safe to say that when you maybe look outside, depending on where you are, you see big trees and you see small trees. You, you see trees that have stood the test of time and then you see maybe younglings that haven't necessarily grown their roots yet or established deep roots yet or 
you see people, because this is talking about people, this is proverbial, parabolic, metaphoric, prophetic language. You see people who don't have deep roots. Why? Because they won't stay planted. And as full-grown adults, we uproot from environment to environment, from romantic relationship to lover to lover to romantic relationship from marriage to marriage and ministry to ministry and job to job and workplace to workplace. And it's no wonder why we can never grow deep roots so that we are unshakable when the winds and the waves and the storms of life come because you have not stayed planted. If you want the benefits of the soil, my friend, you must stay planted. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. The heat of the moment, the heat of the newest headline. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. It's a midday heat wave. Whatever the circumstance might be, whatever the weather pattern might be, yes, naturally and literally, but also maybe spiritually, metaphorically, again, proverbially, parabolically, and yes, prophetically, whatever is happening. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried about long months of drought. They're just not bothered. You can't, they're just unfaced. They're the calm, cool, collected ones that have maintained reason and leveled emotions that are responding through experience and peace because they have deep roots. As opposed to, God bless, others who might not be responding with leveled emotions, reacting with elevated levels of emotion. Not exactly our optimal environment as people, elevated emotions. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. It's been about three years. That's a lot of months of drought. The economy has not been the same. Many of us have lost our jobs. Many of us have lost good people. Many of us have lost families. Some of us have lost absolutely everything. But you would never know it because some people stand strong and they do not get tossed back and forth by the winds and the waves of life because they are so deeply rooted. These are the grounded people. They're grounded. You know what I'm saying? They're just solid. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. My dude, how are you staying green? How are you not withering and dying in this season? When stuff hits the fan, as some might say, when things are just hitting the fan, their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. How are you being fruitful? How are you thriving? How are you producing fruit? How are you producing anything other than fear, uncertainty, doubt, frantic hysteria in this day and age? We just read it. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope. Their hope is not in the NASDAQ. Their hope is not in the S&P 500. Their hope is not in the New York Stock Exchange. Their hope is in something, I need to say someone, unshakable, God himself. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. How do we prepare for war, my friends? The same way we prepare for absolutely everything because the answer and the response is not so that we can prepare for one moment, one preach, one presentation, one exam. It is to prepare our lives, not for one situation, but for any given situation. How? 
by putting our hope and confidence in the Lord, trusting in Him, and you will remain unbothered. We're going to give you an invitation to do exactly this. Put your trust and your hope in the Lord. What does that mean? Believe in Jesus. Why should I? Why should I believe in Jesus? Well, there are many reasons. We've mentioned a few. We'll give you a few more. Why should we believe in Jesus? Forgiveness of sins, eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, personal relationship with God. Pretty good reasons. When you believe in Jesus, everything you've ever done wrong, what the Bible calls sin, is forgiven. We've all done something wrong, thought something wrong, harbored wrong heart attitudes, lust, unforgiveness, greed, grudges, offense. Everything sinful, evil, unkind, we can be forgiven of when you simply believe in Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Then you get into heaven. We talk about death all the time because we all will experience one day the passing away of this lifetime. Our bodies have a shelf life. Your body, as well as mine, has an expiry date. We will all go the way of the world. What has happened to everybody will one day happen to you and I. However, when you believe in Jesus, you will not die. You will actually live forever. Eternal life in heaven. Eternity is a long time. When you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven and you get into heaven. Eternal life in heaven. But we're not just waiting around after we believe in Jesus to die so that we can experience eternal life. We're not just waiting around twiddling our thumbs, having a good do-nothing time at some cute potluck. We're actually experiencing heaven on earth, so much so that nothing bothers you. You're literally at peace, unshakable. That's good news. This is very, very good news. You get into heaven, and heaven gets into you. The greatest of which things that takes place when you believe in Jesus is you begin to have a personal relationship with God. Maybe you've had bad, busted, broken relationships in your life, haven't we all? This is a good one. When you are in relationship with Jesus, everything changes, even everything you have ever known about relationships. That's huge. That's why we need to believe in Jesus. So how do we do that? Babbling, bobbling, Bible boy. So glad you asked. To believe in Jesus, what that means and what it looks like is when you believe that Jesus is who he is and that he's done for you what, he, what he's done for you. We simply change our mind about Jesus. This change of mind is what the Bible calls repentance. Now, surely, if somebody is having a genuine and truthful change of mind, their actions will demonstrate that. You will see it lived out in their decisions. True and genuine repentance, somebody will turn from sin and turn toward Jesus. That's what it looks like. That's how we do it. It's what it means. It's when you believe that Jesus forgives you for your sins. It's when you believe Jesus gives you eternal life in heaven. It's when you believe that Jesus has done for you what he has already done for you. There is a cost for our wrongdoing. There is a penalty for our sin. It is a death penalty. The good news is that Jesus died in your place so that he could pay your personal death penalty for your individual sins when he was crucified, nailed to a cross. Then he was laid in a tomb, and then he resurrected three days later, proving that he is who he says he is through the fulfillment of over 300 prophecies or predictions about who exactly the savior of your soul is. So if this is you, and right now you do not believe in Jesus, but you want to, you want to believe in Jesus, receive forgiveness for your sins, eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, and personal relationship with God, I am going to lead you in a guided prayer. It is not the prayer that saves you. It is only Jesus that saves you, but I'll guide you in your first few steps you can repeat the prayer after me, and we will pray to Jesus together. If this is you, and right now you do not 
believe in Jesus, but you want to. You want to receive forgiveness for your sins, eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, personal relationship with God. And all you are doing is changing your mind, believing that Jesus is who he is and that he has done for you what he has done for you. If this is you, just repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, today I believe in you. I receive forgiveness for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried and you rose again. I welcome you into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If this is you and you have responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. This is very good news. You now have eternal life in heaven. Also, very good news. It's confirmed. When you pass on, you are getting into heaven. It's confirmed. Heaven has already gotten into you, and you can experience peace, wisdom, truth, freedom, liberation, and power. Namely, personal relationship with God. So if this is you, and you have responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Just let us know. We would love to know, celebrate you, receive you, embrace you. We do not want to embarrass you. We only want to give you free stuff. So if this is you and you have responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Just let us know by typing, I did in the comment section just type i did in the live chat maybe you are watching on replay if you've responded to this invitation which means you did not believe in jesus however through this invitation you now do believe in jesus type i did i did again we don't want to embarrass anybody we sincerely want to embrace everybody cheer you on champion you root for you strengthen you encourage you maybe pray a prayer of blessing with you definitely give you free stuff maybe this is something you have already done months ago or years ago and you already have a pre-existing relationship with jesus however for the past few months maybe even the past few years you have not been prioritizing your already pre-existing relationship with Jesus. But you want to. Today, you want to reprioritize your already pre-existing relationship with Jesus. If this is you, and you are rededicating your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years, just type, I do. In the live chat, just type, I do. In the comment section, maybe you are watching on replay. If you are rededicating your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years, just type, I do. The only thing we want to do is embrace you, receive you, cheer you on, champion you, maybe pray with you, prayer of blessing, and give you free stuff. And once again, if you responded to that very first invitation that we first gave you, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through that first invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Again, just let us know by typing, I did. I did. Our online pastoral care team and prayer team is already live with you right now in your chat section. We have six different platforms live, six different chat sections live, and we have people there with you. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Kick, TikTok, as well as Instagramly family. I'm just gonna join in and see what's happening in our chats. Joe Visitor, jumping on over from Twitch fam. We love you, Joe Visitor. No longer a visitor. Joe one of us now. I love that. Uh, also on Instagramly family. Let's go. You do have many viewing options. 
You know, praise God, we're so blessed. Not everybody has the preferences and the options that we have. Um, and I'm thinking namely of religious freedoms right now. Happy and beautiful you with some happy and beautiful comments. Let's go, buddy. Uh, Mama G in the house. Let's go. Always responding to people, acknowledging people. Guys, can we respond to and acknowledge Mama Gloria Gloria? Can we just at them, send them a hug emoji? Just tell Gloria they're awesome. Just at Gloria Gloria on the TikTok and just say you are awesome. Oh, oh, tell them you are phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's uh, something. I mean, Mama G's taught me a lot. One of the things that they've taught me, Obiro. Jeremy, Obiro, go to the office. Just kidding. They're phenomenal. And send them one of those sparkly light emojis. I know Mama G like the sparkly light emoji that looks like sparkles. I just don't, I can't even find the rocket emoji. Guys, I've been looking for the rocket emoji for several weeks and I can't even find it. Banned. It's been banned. I got that emoji because I overused it, I guess. And now it's banned. They're like, Jeremy, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to use the rocket emoji anymore. I feel the essence of the Holy Spirit and his blessing upon us says this user. What is this viewer's name? Cat Cake Cafe. Let's go. Streaming in live from England. Is Papa JJ here? Jack Jacob comes in every day. Streaming in live from Philippines. France is in the house. England is in the house. I don't know if Papa Andrew's in the house from Brisbane, Australia. Probably tomorrow o'clock. Yeah, it's 1016 Saturday morning where Papa Andrew Karamatic is. Oh, yo, we got some good chats about the Holy Ghost. Mama Kristen in the house. Mama Cynthia, Blue Hawk 1-3, as well as Lambriel. Bonnie, let's go. Okay. Well, uh, we'll jump over to our other platforms as well and see what's happening in our other chat sections. Maybe pray a bit. Who knows what's going to happen? Not me. I, I honestly don't. I honestly, I honestly don't. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Totally okay with that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Taylor Laurie. This is my love language. I have a few love languages. Carbs, melted cheese, and rocket emojis. Rocket emojis. Thank you, Taylor Lori. On the Facebook fam, I don't know which part of the world. <gasps> okay, so Taylor Lori, um, you were asking about um how to join the one year Bible reading plan. Upside down, right side up. You just download this off of our website. There's a link in the Facebook written video description for this live stream video. You can just find the link to our website basically anywhere. And then from the website, you can download this for free. It's our one-year Bible reading plan. Taylor was like, what chapter are you guys on? Because I want to jump in. I wasn't able to see this comment during our live moments yesterday, but I did see it after. So uh, first and foremost, I apologize if I'm unable to read or respond to messages. Thank God we have many people here who are doing much more for you than I am in your chat section. But Taylor, to respond to your question, uh, it's, this is free and downloadable um, off of the website. And we have people already committed to reading this. Um, like there's no signing. There's no like anything. It's free. Like it's just they've vocally said, hey, I'm enjoying this so much. I'm going to do this in 2024 uh, to which I will use that strong word because drastic, I guess drastic measures calls for drastic language. I will commit. I will commit to reading the whole Bible cover to cover Genesis chapter one to Revelation 22, January 1st to December 31st. In the year 2024, uh, to answer Taylor's questions, to respond to, you know, we're not just answering questions here. We love Taylor. And I could literally talk to Taylor for several moments because Taylor is this wellspring of wisdom and maturity and insight and experience. Like Taylor and Mama Lynn, just legends. Just some of the best peeps that I think any of us will ever meet. TBH. As the kids no longer say, Mama Victoria 
What is this? We love you too. Uh, just jumping over to the YouTube fam. Victoria's in the house. Don't y'all love Mama Victoria? Somebody's just at Medusoid. <laughs> this screen name. I love our screen names. Medusoid Humanoid. If I'm pronouncing, I apologize if I ever mispronounce anybody's name, screen name, Mama Victoria over here. Shaboom. Let's go, buddy. Um, we got some more conversation about the one-year Bible reading plan. It's free. Um, because Jesus has already paid an immeasurable price. Unknown Adventures. We know this person. Hey, like your profile picture. Not gonna lie, you know. I'm not opposed to it. Alive for Life is in the house. So is Unknown. Let's go, buddy. All the friends, all the fans. Papa Jack Jacob, truly in the house, streaming in live from the Philippines. Lots of Americans, of course. A few cute Canadians in the house. Uh, I won't tell you who exactly is Canadian. I don't know if that's public information, but I am looking at one of them on the YouTube side right now. We know you, and we love you, and we trust you. Yeah, um, the doorbell did ring. Alive for Life is like, the doorbell, the door, the doorbell rang. Uh, who cares? Seriously. Was, is this live? Can we edit that out? Can we edit? We're rolling. This is live. Great. Good to know. Good to know. I'm so comforted. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it, fam. Taxi, f taxi fam. I mean, she is fam. Taxi girl in the house. Boom. Let's go, buddy. Yeah, you. Ooh. Look at all these rocket emojis. Papa Joseph Den in on the Facebook fam. Shaboom, shapow, shapam. Let's go. Uh, Joseph, a man of God, seriously has been journeying with us multiple live streams per day. What do you know about Papa Joseph Den? Just multiple live streams a day, Joseph. I have the pleasure and honor of partnering with Joseph uh, in several different live stream environments. So good. W what can we say? Uh, Joseph, ha we just want to thank you and honor you. And anybody and everybody who invests in who we are, in how we are, in what we do, in how we do. In more ways than one. Just thank you guys. Uh... Case in point, Taylor's in the house. Linda Alaman, shaboom. <laughs> this is so humbling, this comment. As they say from Linda, a uh, longtime friend of mine. Good evening. What does this say? Blessed Friday? The comments keep jumping on me. The Lord is our hope. <laughs> Double exclamation mark. Praise hand emoji coming from Linda on Facebook, fam. Let's go. Uh, not to be contested. With Taylor Laurie's five rocket emojis. Super awesome. Oh, fist bump emoji. Fist bump emoji. Let's go. Coming from Joseph over here. And then, of course, we got Joe Visitor on the Twitch fam. And Jeremy John, 611, who we met this week, made a decision for Jesus live on live stream and downloaded our free downloadable resource as we were... Uh, talking about with Taylor Laurie here on the Facebook. Um, lots of free stuff on the website, including but not limited to how to have a daily time with God in terms of your next steps if you're making a decision for Jesus, uh, just like Jer Jeremy John 611 did. And we had some cool time praying this week as well. Um, oh my gosh, Joe Visitor, this is hilarious. People at the door. <laughs> People at the door just wanted to tell you about their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That, that, I like that. I like that a lot. It was Papa Bill. I don't know if you remember pa Papa Bill who was talking about preaching the gospel. Uh, they were like, yo, when I did door knocking, uh, it's kind of a super tender story. Maybe we'll save it for another time. We'll pray. Um... God, we thank you for peace. And we thank you for the solution. That is first and foremost, the Savior. We thank you for the solution that is true and genuine salvation. God, we just thank you for peace. You are the Prince of Peace. And all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. 
God, we ask that you would establish your kingdom on the earth. Matthew chapter 6, we are commanded to pray on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for peace in Jesus' name. And we just speak life, and we speak life, and we speak life to every corner of the earth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And I think it's safe to say that no matter who we are, we we would ask God, we ask that evil would cease. And we understand that there is coming a time where evil will cease. In Jesus' name. Upon every person, upon every family, every household, every individual watching within earshot, whatever, replay, live. God, we just thank you for the shalom, peace of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, that we would abide in the shelter of the Most High, the shadow of the Almighty. That's Psalm 91. Did we read any Bible today? Yes, we did. <sighs> Check. Official. It's official. Good. We're saved. We're fine. We're good. Hopefully the religious people will be happy. That was a bad joke. We do have jokes, none of which are funny. I apologize. In Jesus' name. And that's what we pray. God, we just pray for reconciliation. We need more people saying sorry and apologizing. Let the Canadians, we'll lead the way. Sure, we'll tell you how to do it. We do it multiple times a day. Like we need actually national leaders to apologize to national leaders. And just be like, bro, we forgive. You know what I'm saying? Re reconciliation bygones be bygones water under the bridge like let's move forward together you know what i'm saying that's what we ask for god forgiveness 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 it's the gospel man it is the technology of god how does god solve problems forgiveness because how are problems started beef drama disagreement fighting arguing God, we thank you for the technology. We don't even understand how high-tech forgiveness is for the individual within oneself and for our surroundings. God, we just thank you for forgiveness. Forgiveness, forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we'll leave that there. Okay, fam. Uh, hey, so many things. Thank you, first and foremost. We've been doing this for two years. Uh, two days from now will be October 15th, 2023. The very first live stream we've ever done is Nadine here, is DRP Kingdoms here, was actually Friday, October 15th, 2021. That was when we first hit live. We did not know what we're doing. Two years later, October 13th, 2023, we still don't know what we're doing which is fine. I feel like that's when God can most use us. When we are fully yielded unto the Holy Spirit. Embracing the mystery and the wonder. Lest we pattern our faith like some kind of cookie cutter Christian. God forbid. So thank you, everybody who's helping us cover the costs uh, and sustain what we do here. Gifting, uh, Samuel Smith was asking. Devon Technologies, thank you guys. Straight Up Sales and Hobbies, thank you guys. ResurrectionApparel.ca, thank you guys. Mama Bonnie, Drew Purcell, Victoria, Sam Smith, thank you guys. Everybody who's asked to remain anonymous, thank you guys for helping us sustain get this far. Um, and also develop, Papa Gerald was here. Um, I don't know if he's still here, but he started the ge ge generosity revival. Uh, and actually, I don't know if, I don't know if Papa Jeff, yo, <laughs> what's up, Dream Master? Let's go. <gasps> so good. Okay, time, 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 time. Papa Gerald, this one's just for you. What are we going to do for the next 30 minutes? Hug people. That's what we're going to do for the next 30 minutes. Papa Gerald, this one's for you, bro. Dream Master in on the TikTok fam. Papa Gerald started it. It was Papa Brad and Papa Gerald, but Papa Gerald was like, uh, yo, how do I gift 
the live stream family a podcast microphone. I just want a gift. And then we're like, I don't know. I don't know how to facilitate that. We have no, we, it's just, we don't have things set up. We just kind of hit live and then just be like, oh, holy ghost, that you would bail us out of this live stream some way, somehow. We just like panic emergency Christian prayer. Oh, God. <laughs> like, come through today. Um, The daily bread, as we talked about yesterday, Exodus chapter 16 and John chapter 6. Papa Gerald was like, hey, I want to gift you guys stuff, equipment. How do we do that? And therefore, the Amazon wish list was born. Papa Jeremiah, thank you for the lights. Somebody anonymous gifted us this computer. What the heck? People believe in this stuff. People believe in you. People believe in what you have been doing here for the past two years. And I really do mean you. I literally just hit live and then I just fumble my way through it by drinking water and saying things that aren't even English, like legitimately. But the family of God takes care of you. They're the one responding to you. They're the ones adding you. They're the ones praying with you. So thank you because people trust you and are investing in what you guys do here. People come in here. They're like, I feel more loved here than I do my family. People come in here, they're like, I am going to unalive myself right now. And our family says, don't you dare. And we call them on the phone and we connect with them and we meet up with them in person. People who have only known each other from online live stream have now met up in person, prayed with each other, hugged each other, spent time with each other, shared meals with each other. This is crazy. People believe in this thing and are behind it. For which I publicly endorse and I publicly acknowledge our family. And of course, we thank God for together not because it's trendy hashtag canadian thanksgiving and it's some kind of attitude is gratitude cliche it is a lifestyle something that mary ellen has taught us all um that's it happy two-year anniversary fam uh and we'll see you monday <laughs> Have a great weekend. Maybe some of us will do Holy Spirit After Party. What that is, it's another live stream on TikTok only that may or may not happen immediately after this live stream. Just let us know by typing, I will host, clear and concise, nothing left for interpretation. Uh, no one's excluded, even though it's only on the TikTok. Everyone's invited. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick, as well as Instagramly family. We'll let you know if it's happening. You guys will hang out with us here, Instagram, and then I'll be back for... One of my favorite environments. It is the Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick end credits scenes. Post end credit scenes. Okay, guys. Love you. Take care. God bless. Oh, bye bye.
What's up, family? We're back in the house. Welcome to the Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick post and credit scenes. Bam 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 bam. Ins 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 ins.